All right, g'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for today's video, looking at round 16's ladder prediction. Again, short turnaround because the rounds back onto each other. It is literally still round 15 as I record this. Brisbane has not yet played Collingwood, but GWS have just beaten Carlton. But I gotta produce the video now or it won't get done at all. A couple of surprising results so far this round and we will go through the ladder and what it looks like. Usually I do go through who's winning the tipping and the fantasy. I won't do that this time because there's still a game left in the round and it doesn't quite add up. Uh, so we'll do that next round. So we'll go through the ladder and it looks like only Collingwood and Richmond have played 15 games and everyone else has played 14. So you've got Port Adelaide, Brisbane, the Tigers and Geelong making up the top four. Obviously Richmond there, perhaps artificially in third because they've played an extra game. Uh, although if the Bulldogs end up beating the Eagles, then they'll stay third. West Coast, Collingwood, St. Kilda, GWS are now in the top eight with Melbourne missing that opportunity to claim that spot over GWS who didn't miss that opportunity tonight by beating Carlton. Melbourne are in ninth, Bulldogs 10th and Essendon pretty much have their final chances almost killed off by West Coast last week. Carlton, again, disappointing loss tonight. Uh, they're in 12th, Gold Coast, Fremantle, Sydney. The next three, Sydney jump up with a win and now ahead of the Hawthorne and Hawthorne, North Melbourne and Adelaide. Uh, our bottom three after Adelaide finally got off the mark by beating the Hawks in Adelaide. So my footy tipping has taken a little bit of a beating. I did tip the Hawks over the Crows and got that one wrong. And I tipped the Demons to beat the Swans as well. So they really let me down, although GWS came good at the end and thankfully I got that tip right as well. So I'm sitting three out of five for the round. I should also clarify this ladder that you've just seen relies on me still getting my tip right. I've tipped Brisbane to beat Collingwood tomorrow night. So, and the ladder that you saw there reflects that as well. So by the time you watch this, Collingwood have actually played 14 games, but it was, says 15 now on the ladder. I can see why that's a bit confusing. Anyway, let's get into the round, assuming the Lions have beaten the Pies. You've got North Melbourne and Port Adelaide at Metricon, two sides with vastly opposite fortunes this year. North Melbourne are currently in 17th, taking on the top of the table power. Both of these sides coming in pretty fresh off the bye. You look at North Melbourne's run of form, and it's not very convincing. A 63-point loss last week at the hands of the Gold Coast Suns, even though the Gold Coast are an improved side, just shows how badly North Melbourne have fallen off this season. By their standards, or any standards really, a 10 or 11 goal loss to the Gold Coast Suns is shameful, and this season is just about, well, well and truly down the gurgler. They're sitting 3 to 11 and 76%. Uh, they had some promising form in recent weeks. They lost to the Lions by one point, and they gave the Pies a good run before the Pies kicked away late. But at the moment, they're just another side that's probably gagging for the end of that season and that number two draft pick, which they seem kind of destined for, depending on how exactly how bad Hawthorne are for the rest of the year. Contrast that with Port Adelaide, who uh, are up and about at the moment. A four-goal win over the Swans last week and have won four out of their last five and can rest pretty comfortably knowing that it doesn't take too much for them now to finish the season strongly in a top two position. Either way, they've still got so much to play for with it being tight at the top and them needing to win games to secure that top two position knowing that they can play home finals thankfully at Adelaide Oval and including the prelims. So a top two position this year could be seriously valuable to Port Adelaide. I don't feel like I really need to make the case for Port Adelaide too strongly here. I think they're a much better side with more to play for and that usually is a recipe for a handsome victory by 30 points. Next up, we've got St. Kilda and the Hawks, a tale of 7th versus 16th, again at Metricon Stadium. The Saints run of form has been a little patchy. They had a three-point loss to the Demons last game uh, and the Demons are such an enigma side at the moment obviously just lost to Sydney showing how inconsistent they can be but that was almost like a mini final and St Kilda couldn't quite get over the line and the same the previous week they lost by two points to the Lions in what is again almost like a finals rehearsal thankfully for them they've banked enough wins to be still well and truly in that finals position but those are the sort of games St. Kilda need to start winning if they're going to be a serious threat this year. They currently sit 8 and 6 with plenty to play for. I did a little quick mock uh, ladder predictor in my last video you might have seen and got a lot of hate for St. Kilda missing the finals. And that just goes to show how tight it is between the teams in about 6th all the way down to, uh, I'll say, Essendon in 11th in reality. The point I'm trying to make is St. Kilda are a good team. But if they have any more slip-ups for the rest of the year, it could find them 
heartbreakingly, on the wrong side of that top eight. Coming up against Hawthorne, and this is a side that just is absolutely begging for the season to end, it seems. Going down to the uh, to the Crows, rather, by several goals over in Adelaide. Matthew Nick's first win as coach uh, is not the sort of thing Clark I will not in his record. I believe that Matthew Nix is the first coach to have his first coaching win against Alistair Clarkson, so that's a little record there. Hard to say what really is the issue with the Hawks at the moment. They've had some injury concerns for sure, but the talent on their list is far better than the performers they're playing, and, and it's fair to say they are the worst team in the competition right now on current form, because Adelaide has certainly been playing at a high standard in the last few weeks. As a result of that, I'm going to say St. Kilda are going to be far too good, and I'm going to tip them by about 25 points. Geelong versus Essendon at the Gabba. This is always an interesting clash between these two teams. Geelong, obviously, in sitting in the top four against Essendon in 11th, who are pretty much on the outer in terms of finals calculations. We'll start with the Cats. They're looking like as good a premiership contender as any team right now. The last time they played before their bye was against the Bulldogs. I think it was at Metricon, and they gave up a massive first-term lead. And I think it was their biggest comeback from a first-quarter deficit since about 1931 or something stupid. Such was the character that they showed to overcome that Bulldog side who really just couldn't quite get the job done despite playing better for large periods of that game. It was a crucial four points. As an Eagles fan, I was begging the dogs to get over the line because it helps my team make the top four. But those are the sort of victories that will help define a season. And I've just got a funny feeling about Geelong this year. This could be a season for them to remember. As such, it's hard to back Essendon against them. Essendon were playing some pretty good football, I would say, against West Coast. In fact, I actually thought that the two sides were very even and the only difference between them on the night was that the West Coast kicked straight up from pretty difficult opportunities. They were nailing goals from about 50 metres out on angles and stuff like that. And that counted against Essendon, even though they weren't playing that poorly. This could be a season Essendon sort of reflected back on and rue. They're a better side than 6, 7, 1 and 88% suggests. In fact, obviously they made the finals last year. So they should have considered themselves right in the thick of it this year. But I guess injuries and just some inconsistent, indifferent form has really cost them. As such, I'm going to tip the Cats here to put them to the sword by a good 25 points. Next up, we have the Bulldogs and West Coast. I just touched on the Bulldogs. They gave the Cats a really good run last week and are really disappointing in the way that they couldn't get over the line for a side that's gunning for that top eight. And for my mind, probably slightly outside those best top eight teams at the moment. They're still playing some pretty good footy, and this is an absolute danger game for the West Coast Eagles. The Dogs' last run of five hasn't been too bad, so they had a disappointing loss against Port in Adelaide, but they played pretty well and were unlucky not to win the game. They played pretty well against the Lions at the Gabba. They went down by four goals, but I thought they actually played to a high standard. They flogged Adelaide. They beat Melbourne in like a mini final, and then last week was the week I referred to where they lost by 11 points. So I actually think their form is pretty compelling at the moment. On the flip side of that, the West Coast Eagles, Eagles are starting to come into that congested part of their fixture where there's a lot of demand on the players to recover quickly, and it's also coincided with some bad injury runs. So now Shuey's out for the game, and Elliot Yo is uh, is still out. So there's two key midfielders there. They'll get Kennedy back in, but I think the way they're trending and the way they played against the uh, against the Bombers on Tuesday night doesn't fill me with confidence that they'll be able to recover after a five day break and beat the Bulldogs at Metricon, who are coming off the bye. I think the Eagles are a better team, and I don't think that's too controversial to say, but I do think this is a danger game for them. I'm going to say the Doggies upset them by, let's call it 11 points. Next up, we have Melbourne versus Fremantle at Kazali Stadium. I've talked about Melbourne a lot in this video already so far, so I'll just rehash the idea that they have been so inconsistent that it's probably going to cost them a top eight spot. I thought they were a sure thing maybe yesterday, but going down to Sydney and seeing how close this battle for that top eight spot is between about 11 teams. Uh, I think they've almost shot themselves in the foot. So obviously a 21 point loss to the Swans last week, or you know, today actually. They just beat the Saints in what was a mini final, and then previous to that, went down by five goals against another side competing for a similar spot on the ladder. They beat the Pies by about 10 goals the week before that, and then put North to the sword by 50 points. And I think before that, they won against Adelaide by 50 points. So some really up and down form there. Coming up against Fremantle, who have been playing some good footy, some promising footy by their standards. 
getting a lot out of the youngsters. Someone like Caleb Sarong has been a shining light this year. Blake Akers just stepped up in his fourth game for the club and put by far his best performance in. A lot to like about Fremantle. Well, they, they took it up to Richmond, although Richmond probably looked a little bit fatigued in that game, which contributed to that being maybe more competitive than it otherwise would have been. I genuinely don't know who to tip here because I don't know which Melbourne side is going to show up. Fremantle are definitely good enough to pip them on their day, but something's telling me Melbourne... Uh, due for a win, considering you know how up and down they are. I'm going to say they win this by 20 points, but there is definitely an upset potential there. Fremantle are not a bad side. Next up, we've got the Crows and the Giants, and believe it or not, both sides coming off a victory. Adelaide obviously had their first win under Matthew Nix, first win of the season to avoid the ignomania of being one of the only sides to go winless. I think, would they say Fitzroy was the last one, like around the time of the war? I don't know. I didn't really pay attention. But either way, Adelaide playing some better football in recent weeks. It cannot be denied. So before they beat the Hawks, they had a five-goal loss to Geelong. No shame in that. And they're pretty good against the Pies in Adelaide. But now I look at it, they've got Belgium by the Dogs and Melbourne in that time. So really, not a whole lot to write home about before that performance. There's not a whole lot of positives to come out of Adelaide this season. It was good to see the Crouch brothers back to their best, but probably the, one of the bigger shining lights for them has been the emergence of Ben Keyes, who was, I think, a delisted pickup from Brisbane. I don't think he was traded. I think he was delisted. Um, former top 20-ish pick or around that mark, and he's starting to find form. Kicked a good goal against the Hawks earlier this week. It's nice to have some positives coming out of the Crows for once, but I think they're coming up against the side who has just overcome Carlton. I literally just watched that game then. It was an arm wrestle. Carlton held them off really well, but couldn't quite get the job done. And you can see GWS kicked one goal nine in the first quarter or a half or something like that. Really shows that they were on the verge of breaking through, but couldn't quite get it done. And they've been a frustrating case this year, a side that's definitely underperformed. They made the grand final last year. I do recall last year they as well, they started the year as one of the best teams fell away, only finished six, and then emerged again at the end of the season to be one of the better sides in the comp come finals time. Are we seeing that again? I'm not too confident about that just yet, but I am very confident they will play finals, and this is a game they cannot lose if they wish to achieve just that. It's at Adelaide Oval, so I'm expecting a good contest from the Crows, but let's say the Giants win this by 20 points. Next up, we got Carlton and Sydney, two sides now. I'm pretty confident saying are definitely both out of the finals picture. Carlton disappointing again to let a crucial game slip. Two weeks in a row, they've had a game against a side that's gunning for that top eight spot, uh, but fallen away short and late. And to be fair, I think Collingwood and Gino are some good sides that are more experienced and were probably just wanted a bit more and a bit cleaner when it mattered. Just a couple of annoying moments for them tonight. I saw Jack Martin ran into what was more or less an open goal, uh, and he tried to right foot banana it, and he just bellied it out. On, uh, not even out in the full, it just stayed in play. You know, crucial moments like that, that is what has cost Carlton at times this year, even though it's been a very successful season as far as I'm concerned. They've shown great improvement. But next year, you just feel like they're going to be a little bit stronger and a little bit more composed in those tight tussles. They're coming up against Sydney, who, by contrast, are a bit further along, or further behind, rather, the rebuild tr uh, track. They had a good win against the Ds, as we saw. They've got some great youth. But frankly, I don't think they're quite as good as Carlton. They were good against the Ds, no doubt. They got a bit out of Kennedy and Luke Parker and Jake Lloyd as their best three. Still getting a lot out of their best players. And it's good for the morale of that young side to develop, to get that win under the belt. That being said, I think Carlton, if they're not too dejected from these last two losses, should win this by about 17 points. Next up, we've got the Brisbane Lions and the Gold Coast Suns at the Gabba. And this one is fairly straightforward for me. Even though the Gold Coast Suns are coming off one of their biggest victories ever, uh, surely, against North Melbourne to win by 63 points. Here coming up against their big brother, the Brisbane Lions, just announced that there's going to be a home grand final should they make it. They surely will be not letting that opportunity slip, and they're looking at every game this year as an opportunity to put a brick in place to win that premiership. I don't know. I'm talking shit. I'm basically saying that Brisbane have a great chance this year to win the whole thing, and every game is important from here to secure that top two position. I don't really need to sell this one to you too much. Brisbane are a lot better than Gold Coast. Coming off a bye, both of these sides will be fresh, but I'm expecting the Lions to win this by... Oh, let's call it 20 points. All right, guys, that is the end of the round, if I'm not mistaken. Let's have a look. It looks like, for the first time in a long, long time, everyone's played the same amount of games, which has Port Adelaide first, Brisbane second, Geelong, and Richmond, and they 
I think those are the best four teams in the comp, so that's good. West Coast probably are the fifth best side in the comp, followed by St. Kilda, GWS, and Collingwood. Melbourne, Bulldogs, Carlton, and Essendon languishing just outside that top eight with a sneaky chance to fall in, but it's looking tougher and tougher as we get later in the season. Gold Coast, Fremantle, and Sydney are the next three teams, and the last three are still Hawthorne, North Melbourne, and Adelaide. Anyway, guys, that's all we have time for this week. Let me know what you think about my footy tips, as I know you will. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.